As Jenna, I stood in the middle of our grand living room, the heart of our upscale apartment in the city. The room buzzed with the laughter and chatter of the elite, friends and acquaintances gathered for our lavish party. My husband, Michael, mingled among the guests, his charisma and charm as evident as ever. And there, laughing a little too loudly at his jokes, was Lisa, my best friend since college. I can't believe how you pull this off every time, Jenna. Your parties are always the talk of the town, Lisa complimented, her eyes sparkling under the chandelier's glow. I smiled, brushing off the compliment. It's nothing, really, just a gathering of friends. As the evening wore on, I noticed Lisa and Michael together more often than not. Their interaction seemed innocent enough, but something in the way Lisa touched his arm or leaned in to whisper something didn't sit right with me. A few days later, the truth crashed down on me like a ton of bricks. I came home early to surprise Michael with dinner, only to find him in a compromising position with Lisa. My heart shattered into a million pieces. How could you? I managed to choke out, tears stinging my eyes. Michael looked more annoyed than remorseful. It's not what it looks like, Jenna. But Lisa was brazen, stepping forward with a cold confidence. Actually, Jenna, it's exactly what it looks like. And to be honest, I think I'm a better option for Michael than you ever were. I felt a surge of disbelief and anger. You're my best friend, Lisa. How could you do this to me? Lisa shrugged, her expression unapologetic. Sometimes, Jenna, you have to go after what you want. And I want Michael. Turning to Michael, I searched his face for any sign of the man I married. The man I thought loved me. Is this what you want, Michael? After everything we've built together? Michael avoided my gaze, his silence more telling than any words. I think it's for the best, Jenna. Lisa understands my needs better. The pain was indescribable, a mix of betrayal and disbelief. I had lost not just my husband, but my best friend. In one cruel twist, my seemingly perfect life crumbled into dust. I left our apartment that night, the echoes of their laughter haunting me. I walked aimlessly through the city streets, the skyscrapers and city lights blurring into a cascade of tears. It was the end of a chapter in my life, but little did I know, it was also the beginning of something new. A journey of self-discovery, resilience, and ultimately, triumph over those who had wronged me. As I sat alone in a small cafe, a plan began to take shape in my mind. I would not let this betrayal define me. I would rise from the ashes of my broken heart and show Michael and Lisa that I was more than what they had reduced me to. It was time for Jenna to take back control of her story. As Jenna, the aftermath of Michael and Lisa's betrayal, left me adrift in a sea of confusion and heartache. The city, once a canvas of our shared dreams, now felt cold and indifferent. My phone, which used to buzz with constant messages and invitations, fell silent. Friends who I thought were mine sided with Michael, influenced by his wealth and status. One evening, sitting alone in a small cafe, a woman approached me. She had kind eyes and a warm smile. Her name was Eleanor. Mind if I join you? It seems like you could use some company. I nodded, surprised but grateful for the gesture. You're Jenna, right? I've heard about what happened with your husband. I'm so sorry. Her words were a balm to my wounded soul. Thank you. It's been tough. Eleanor shared her own story of betrayal and how she rebuilt her life. Her strength and resilience inspired me. You know, Jenna, sometimes the people we trust the most can hurt us the deepest. But it's in these moments that we find our true strength. I listened, mesmerized by her confidence and wisdom. How did you get through it? I asked eager for any guidance. By realizing my own worth, and knowing that their actions say more about them than about me. Her words struck a chord within me. For weeks I had been drowning in self-pity and despair, questioning my worth because of their betrayal. You need to stand up for yourself, Jenna. Reclaim your life. You are so much more than the lies they've told. Her advice ignited something within me, a spark of determination and a desire to rise above the pain. In the following days, I began to pick up the pieces. The financial strain was real. Michael had cut me off, leaving me with little to survive. But I refused to let that stop me. I started applying for jobs, using the skills I had neglected during my marriage. My first interview was daunting. I sat across from a panel of stern faces, my hands trembling slightly. Why do you want this job, Jenna? One of the interviewers asked. I took a deep breath, Eleanor's words echoing in my mind. 
I want to be independent, to rebuild my life on my own terms. I have skills and dedication, and I want a chance to prove that. They must have seen the determination in my eyes, the unwavering resolve that Eleanor helped me find. I got the job. Each day was a step forward. I reconnected with old friends who had stayed true, and they welcomed me back with open arms. Eleanor became a constant in my life, her guidance and friendship a beacon in my darkest times. One evening, as we sat in the same cafe where we first met, I shared my gratitude. Eleanor, you've been a lifeline. I don't know how to thank you. She smiled, her eyes shining with kindness. Seeing you find your strength is all the thanks I need, Jenna. Remember, this is just the beginning. You're going to do great things. As I left the cafe that night, the city lights no longer seemed cold and distant. They twinkled like stars, guiding me on a new path. A path of self-discovery, independence, and, perhaps most importantly, healing. Michael and Lisa had taken much from me, but they couldn't take my spirit, my resilience. I was Jenna, and this was my journey to rise again. The days following my newfound determination were a blur of activity. I, Jenna, was no longer the broken-hearted wife, but a woman on a mission. My first step was to secure my financial and legal standing. I reached out to a reputable lawyer, Mr. Davidson, a man known for his sharp mind and no-nonsense approach. Sitting in his stark, professional office, I laid out my situation. His eyes, sharp and calculating, assessed me not just as a client, but as a person who had been wronged. You're saying Michael could be involved in unethical business practices, Mr. Davidson questioned, his pen poised over a legal pad. Yes, and I need proof. I know he's not as clean as he pretends to be. Mr. Davidson nodded. All right, Jenna, I'll start the divorce proceedings, but for the business allegations, you'll need solid evidence. That's when I decided to hire a private investigator. Max, a recommended PI with an impressive track record, was my choice. We met in a quiet coffee shop, away from prying eyes. I need someone who can dig deep into my husband's business affairs. Discreetly, I explained. Max assured me with a confident, albeit slightly grim smile. Discretion is my middle name, Jenna. I'll find what you're looking for. With the legal and investigative fronts covered, I turned to my own aspirations. My conversation with Eleanor had sparked an idea, a dream I had shelved years ago. I began drafting a business plan for a boutique marketing firm. My expertise and experience, though rusty, were still valuable. One evening, as Eleanor and I sipped coffee in her cozy living room, I shared my plans. I'm starting my own business, Eleanor. It's time I use my skills for myself. She beamed with pride. That's the spirit, Jenna. What's the plan? I outlined my ideas, from client acquisition strategies to creative marketing approaches. Eleanor listened intently, her insights and suggestions adding depth to my plans. You're going to be amazing, Jenna. Just remember, it's not going to be easy, but it will be worth it. Her words were both a warning and a motivation. I knew the road ahead would be tough, but I was ready for the challenge. Over the next few weeks, Max provided me with regular updates. The information he unearthed about Michael's business dealings was more incriminating than I had imagined. Embezzlement, shady deals, and unethical practices. The evidence was damning. I handed everything over to Mr. Davidson, who looked over the documents with a grim satisfaction. This is more than enough to build a strong case, Jenna. Not just for the divorce, but possibly for criminal charges against Michael. As the legal gears began to turn, I focused on building my business. The early days were tough, full of long nights and endless networking. But slowly, clients began to show interest. My first major contract was a turning point, the moment I knew that my efforts were paying off. Sitting in my new office, a modest but bright space, I looked out at the city skyline. The lights seemed to shine brighter, the possibilities endless. I had come a long way from the tearful, broken woman in the cafe. I was building something of my own, something that Michael and Lisa could never take away from me. But my journey wasn't over yet. The final act of this drama was yet to unfold and I was ready to face it head-on. Michael and Lisa would soon learn that underestimating Jenna was their biggest mistake. The courtroom was a stark contrast to the world I had once inhabited as Jenna, a world of superficial glitter and shallow promises. Here, in the solemnity of justice, I found a different kind of power. My soon-to-be ex-husband, Michael, 
sat across the room, his usual confidence replaced by a tense, uneasy demeanor. Beside him, Lisa, my former best friend, looked visibly shaken. Mr. Davidson stood beside me, his presence a reassuring pillar of strength. The judge's gavel echoed in the room, marking the beginning of the end of my old life. As we proceed with this divorce settlement, it's crucial we consider the evidence of Mr. Michael's misconduct, Mr. Davidson stated confidently, presenting the documents Max had gathered. Michael's lawyer attempted to downplay the evidence, but it was futile. The judge's expression grew increasingly stern as she reviewed the files. It's evident that Mr. Michael has engaged in serious financial malpractices, which has a direct impact on the divorce settlement, the judge declared. I watched as Michael's facade crumbled, his eyes betraying a hint of the fear he must have felt. Lisa, too, seemed to shrink in her seat, the reality of her situation dawning on her. The judge awarded me a significant portion of Michael's assets, far more than I had anticipated. But it wasn't the money that gave me satisfaction. It was the vindication, the acknowledgement of the wrongs done to me. After the ruling, Michael approached me, a shadow of his former self. Jenna, I... I'm sorry. I never meant for things to go this far. His apology, hollow and insincere, didn't stir any emotion in me. Your apology means nothing to me now, Michael. You made your choices, and now you must live with them. With that, I walked away from him and Lisa, leaving behind the pain and betrayal. I walked into a new life, one where I was no longer a victim, but a survivor. In the months that followed, my marketing firm flourished. The struggle of building it from the ground up made every success sweeter. I found respect and recognition, not as Michael's wife, but as Jenna, the entrepreneur. Eleanor and I often celebrated these small victories. One evening, at a gala celebrating women in business, she hugged me tightly. Look at you, Jenna. You're not just surviving, you're thriving. Her words filled me with pride. I couldn't have done it without your support, Eleanor. My story, once a tale of heartbreak and betrayal, had transformed into one of resilience and empowerment. I had reclaimed my life, my identity, and my happiness. As I stood there, amid applause and admiration, I knew that this was just the beginning. I had overcome the darkest chapter of my life, but there were many more chapters yet to be written. And this time, I was the author of my own story. The story of Jenna's resilience and triumph over betrayal has come to a close. Now here's a thought-provoking question for you. Do you believe Jenna was justified in refusing Michael's apology and seeking justice? Or should she have considered forgiveness for the sake of moving on? Share your thoughts in the comments below.